Okay, here we are. We're going to go ahead and remove the old drive gear uh, from your Explorer Dome installation so we can install the encoder wheel. And this is a pretty straightforward operation. Typically it's an eighth inch Allen wrench. I like these T's just because it makes it a whole lot easier. Make sure it's loose. One real important thing before you do anything with this drive gear is make sure the power is cut to it. Either by unplugging the motor or totally taking the power away from the Foster Systems board. So I went ahead and loosened that Allen uh, set screw. And now usually it comes off pretty easily. Now this one's going to make a liar out of me. Worst case, just a little pry with a screwdriver. And there we go. And it comes off pretty easily. Now we'll continue with the next video where I'm going to show you how to install the encoder wheel to it. And we'll be back after that. Hi, here we are setting up and installing the Foster Systems encoder kit slash upgrade kit to an existing Explore Dome track wheel. First thing you need to do is you get the encoder wheel and put it on the track drive and what we do, I do is with a couple pieces of tape, you fasten it so it won't slide around. Two is probably just fine. And then what I'm going to do is using the existing holes on the encoder wheel, there's eight of them, I'm going to go ahead and use a drill bit, sixteenth of an inch approximately doesn't have to be if you don't have a 16th inch bit something close all we're going to do is drill some pilot holes in the area so that we can attach the encoder wheel to the gear so you just drill on through there's eight of them try to be precise but remember this is not a space shuttle space shuttle engine so if it's slightly off you can always adjust this material is fairly soft so it's not a big deal and once you drill all eight you can go ahead and release the encoder wheel Hopefully my wife won't kill me doing this on the, the dining room table, but oh well. So now here we have the, the gear. It now has drilled eight holes that match up with the eight holes on the encoder. Now what you do is there, there's eight little spacers, little nylon spacers that came with your kit. You can approximately just drop them on top of each hole. And those are the spacers that we use to provide separation of the encoder wheel from the gear so that the actual decoder can slide in there. And I'll just go ahead and uh, use a uh, Phillips head bit for my rechargeable. And then you kind of line this up. So it'll drop into place. The one thing that I I will mention now, and I hope you uh, uh, are looking at this before you start drilling, is that on the gear there's the little Allen screw, set screw that you use to tighten it to the motor axle. Just make sure that when you when you place the encoder wheel 
on and you tape it onto the gear that it that is in between two of the holes so that you can slide your allen wrench in there it's not in the way let's suppose you are doing this as we uh you find out later that it's in the way all you have to do is re-drill the holes you know slide the encoder wheel a little bit re-drill the holes no harm no foul so now we drop this on top kind of feel for the hole you kind of almost can start them with your finger I like to put two of them so that makes the rest of them fairly easy and then just it's just a matter of tightening them remember this is soft plastic so don't torque down or you'll just strip the hole in fact if you're screw gun has a, one of these torque uh, devices you just set it at one of the lower torques and that way you can't hurt anything and then just it just becomes a matter of aligning the holes with the screws and uh, uh, torques too loose Just make sure that the uh, the screws continue to line up, and that you're going you're going through the spacer. If something moves, it's simple enough to just reach in there with the finger. Or my fingers are too big, but you can go in there with a screwdriver or something to. And just carefully go until you finish all eight and then you're done and join me next to join me next part of the video we'll go ahead and attach this uh, the newly modified wheel to the uh, to the actual dome so you can get the tick counter working Here we are, we've, uh, the previous segment we installed the encoder wheel to our drive gear and we're done with that. So now we're going to reinstall it, just, you have to carefully look at the axle, axle of the motor, make sure that the key, there's a little oval key in it that gives it a, a method so that it will not spin in place. You go ahead and drop that key, drop the gear into that key slot, and then bring it down some. Now, with your eighth inch Allen wrench, go in there and tighten the the set screw. This has to be done quite tightly because I guarantee if you don't do it tightly, it will work its way loose one night. There it is. You make sure you're still at a good level. It still engages. And I'll also, while I have it swung out here, I'll make uh, the installation of the encoder detector. I've already pre-wired it, but there is a set of terminals here with a little tiny flathead screwdriver where you connect the two leads of the tick counter. Those are coming from a tick counter magnet. And that's what lets you uh, set the home position. It detects the home position using that tick counter magnet. Next, the way this uh, attaches to the motor is by using two
stainless steel. hose clamps and what you do is you go ahead and open the hose clamp all the way so it detaches from the screw mechanism so that you can install it without having to uninstall the motor and you just slip one in low and then you slip the other one high high I mean almost to the top of the motor Then using a screwdriver, I go ahead and start the band in the screw mechanism, so you got it gets a bite. Just get it started. The looser it is now, the easier it is to put in the uh, encoder mechanism, decoder mechanism. Okay, so those are now engaged. Now I bring the whole bracket up. And usually it's easiest to slip the bottom in first. This takes a little jiggling around. And then the top. And then while it's real loose, you have to make sure the top engages so that the little U-shaped mechanism of the encoder is split by the encoder wheel you installed earlier. So now that I've got it loosely set, now it's time to get the tighten these up. I'll hand tighten the first several turns, make that a little easier. And then get the flat bladed screwdriver. I'm running out of hands, but ah, this will work. Then once you got one engaged and it's holding it loosely, go ahead and get the top one going. Initially it'll take a bunch of turns to get it close to snug. And the way this rides on the motor, we use the actual fitting as the adjustment mechanism. So depending on how tight you tighten these hose clamps will determine the final position of the encoder uh, detector. Right now I'm just taking all the slack out of it. Take some more slack out of the bottom, but this one's almost pretty close. Work some more on the top. And it's really good, you really do need to start with very loosely fitting so you can easily get the mount in without having to struggle trying to position the encoder. So we're getting there. One thing you'll notice is, as you tighten on the top, it brings the encoder closer, and as you tighten the bottom, it kind of rocks it back the opposite direction. The trick is to get it into a position where the encoder overlaps the encoder wheel just enough so that the holes are visible to the encoder. You just have to be very careful. You keep tightening until 
the top part of the encoder detector, there's a screw up there, a screw head. You want to get that fairly close to the gear, but not touch it. And then you, every time you tighten the top, you tighten some more at the bottom. So that things are balanced. I think we got to go a little bit more. And this goes back to my initial warning. Just make sure anytime you're working on this stuff that the uh, motor is unplugged and the power is disconnected. The last thing you want this thing to do is to fire up while you're trying to make adjustments. Because I guarantee your fingers will lose. Okay. There we got it. Let me get a close-up of the, the whole mechanism. You want the wheel, the encoder wheel, to split the little detector in half but not touching the inside, just barely, almost touching, but not qu just quite. And the last connection of the, onto the encoder board is your phone jack cable that comes from the Foster Systems board that just snaps in. It clicks. And then you can check operation. By powering up and making sure the, the whole system turns on and off. And make sure that you can slew east and west. One thing that's important to do. Once you install this. Since the resolution of the, of the system is now increased if you're retrofitting. But if you're this is a new installation you won't notice. You'll just get the high resolution off the bat. You have to do an auto cal right after this. So that the dome knows how many ticks are available. For a full rotation of the Explorer dome. Great. If you have any further questions you can email us. On our website at fostersystems.com. There is a bulletin board there where you can post questions. I encourage you to use that. Or there's also a phone number there. You can call and leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we practically can. Great. Thank you very much and enjoy.